Hey, welcome back to another tutorial video. I will be going over the DLZ or Dynamic Launch Zone in the F-16 and Falcon BMS. There are a lot of tutorials about Falcon BMS on YouTube, but they're about 5 to 8 years old. I would like to create some new videos about my knowledge and ideas while placing emphasis on manuals that come with Falcon BMS. So if you're interested in the DLZ on the F-16, this video is for you, and be sure to subscribe for more. Make sure to check out the description below for timestamps and aviation related shirts that will directly support the channel. If you would like for me to make a video about something specific, please feel free to comment in the comments below. If you are new to BMS, by all means, speak up and tell me what you would like to see in my future videos. I would be glad to help. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. See ya. Hey, so this is an in-depth run rundown of the DMZ of the F-16 HUD in Falcon BMS. Using the TO in the BMS folder, or Falcon folder, inside of Documents. Going down to DLZ, Dynamic Launch Zone. This is the symbols, everything. I'm going to start with the top, the, the angle. Start here. So this is a targeting queue. This is your distance from the target. Targeting range queue. So wherever this is, this means that that's where your status is. This is your closure speed from you and your target. Going up here to the angle. Here, the angle persists of the arrow, our arrow, and our optimal. So our arrow is range aerodynamic. This is the aerodynamically, this is the aerodynamic r maximum range of the missile, as long as the target does not maneuver or the and the pilot performs optimal loft steering. So the lofting, as long as you perform the loft and the other target doesn't maneuver, it should hit. Moving down to optimal. This is, as it says here, basically the same thing as arrow, but with high termination criteria. Criteria. So this you would have to launch as well with 35 degrees or whatever this number says. In my case, it says 10. So you have to pitch up to 35 degrees to be able to reach this max. Moving on down to R pi. R pi is the range probability of intercept. It's the same as R opt, but you do not have to make the the rain, the lofting maneuver up here. This is still assuming that the target is non-maneuvering. So this moving down to this closed staple, RTR, range turn and run, represents the max shot, assuming the target turns away. So if the tar even if the target turns away, statistically and uh, mathematically, the missile will be able to hit the target even if the other target turns away. And then going down the minimum range, this is self-explanatory. All right, so here's the differences between HPRF, high pulse repetition frequency, and medium pulse repetition frequency. So in a nutshell, the high pulse is better for high aspect targets moving at a high rate of speed, which is the target at the very beginning. It'll be HPRF active, which is, it is farther away. As it gets closer, it will be MPRF active, which is better for aircraft that are that are closer. So it's not high aspect, it's just a little closer, it knows where it's going, and it'll use MPRF, which is Pitbull. This HPRF is Husky. That being said, you can support the missile till it goes MPRF. And if you would like, you could support the missile after MPRF, but it's already using the missile's internal radar to track. You don't have to. But you can. But for the most part, you would support the missile until it goes pitbull and during the HPRF status of it. So, yep, just wanted to explain that. But, uh, so a pole is the range from your target to the aircraft. From, correction, range from your aircraft to the target when the missile will go HPRF. A pole is HPRF, which is it'll have it on uh, right here range to your aircraft target, and then M-pole, same as A-pole, but with MPRF active. F-pole is range to the target when the missile will impact the target. The range, your aircraft for the target when it, when it hits. I go down here. I also got the same thing, closure speed, closure speed, M-pole. As I said, M-pole is the same as A-pole, but MPR active. So range from your 
from your aircraft to the target when the missile will go active. So impole is the range from your aircraft to the target when the missile will go NPRF active. So down here has it 30. So it'll be 30 miles when your missile goes active. So it's closure speed DMC. DMC is the angle that your target has to, to change to be able to degrade the missile from hitting. It'll degrade the missile, have the missile will have to, to adjust and do drag and all that. So if the your target a heading of right here it says 150. So if your target goes a heading of 150, it'll degrade the missile more than any other angle. So I'm gonna scroll down. Scroll down here. Talk about the times down here. Right here it has predicted impulse for the missile in flight. 24 M is the distance. Down here it has A. It's time to HPRF active. Moving on to here, once it goes HPRF active, it goes M. This is MPRF active. And then once it does that, it'll give you a T, which is the target time of impact, the calculated time of impact to hit the target. It doesn't mean that it, it hit it, just calculated that went to zero. And going back up here, so this is the distance that you will be when it goes pipple. Down here, same thing here. Predicted F pole for the missile in flight. I'm going to go through it quickly in the uh, simulator and we'll see, I'll show you all the aspects in real time. Alright, so I'm going to play. Right here it says 10 degrees, so if I go up 10 degrees, the, the distance or the angle goes away and my uh, range cue gets closer. So I'm going to pickle off right here, so Fox 3, pause it right here. So there's the DMZ. If the, if the aircraft, enemy aircraft were to turn off 110 degrees, then it would degrade the missile. Or, sorry, DMC, Digital Maneuvering Queue. So if, that, if the aircraft did that, then the missile would be degraded enough to probably miss. The closing speed, this is the 14M, which is M pole. So this is the range my aircraft would be to the target when, the, when it goes HPRF Husky. Down here, the range right now, right here is the range right now, 18 miles. This is all the same thing, so it's be A14, so 14 seconds until it goes husky. Play. So 13 seconds, 12. Go over here. Pause it. Look down here. Basically the same thing, 13, A05. So in 5 seconds it'll go husky. So, like I said, Husky, now it has an M, transitions to an M, which is M pole. This uh, right here will be the distance I will be to the target when uh, it goes M pole, when it goes pit pole. And I'm going to continue the missile timer. So it goes all the way to zero, it'll be pit pole. I'm going to continue, so five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. And there's one that changes again. So there's T. So there's 17 seconds calculated that the missile will hit the target. And F is will be my distance from the target when it hits. So I'll be 11 miles from the target when it hits. I'm at 14 now. So it'll go down like 3.3 miles once it hits. I'm going to let that go through. 14, 13, 12. You see this see this uh this slash that's the symbology for pitbull so once it goes to t once it goes from uh, m on here once it goes from m to t it will have that slash on it which means that it went pitbull as long as you keep your lock onto him so he's turning away one second and then transition to an x this means that 
see how the M went to zero. And once it goes that, it's uh hits the target. Hits the target. 